Hey everybody, welcome back to Elevate and Reflect with DC. I am your host, Dark Cancer, and today we're delving into a crucial topic, still roaming in the realm of stress, that's what we're talking about this week, but in the workplace. I know I mentioned it before, but today I'm going to dive a little bit further into it, okay? We've explored personal strategies for managing stress, and today we'll focus on how to tackle stress in the professional setting and exp- explore actionable steps both individuals and organizations can take. As a recap of episode five, okay, we discussed various techniques to manage personal stress, including self-care practices, prioritizing tasks, and setting boundaries. We even emphasized the importance of maintaining a balance and using practical strategies to handle stress effectively. If you missed that, I'm sorry, uh, but you can listen to it. Um, it's on my both my podcast channel and my Patreon and YouTube uh, to get a solid foundation for today's discussion on workplace stress. Now, let's get on to the first topic, which is understanding work-related stress. Stress in the workplace is a significant issue that can impact not only uh, individuals, but also organizations as a whole. And according to the World Health Organization, or WHO, uh, Work-related stress occurs when a job demands uh, exceed an uh, individual or person's capacity to manage them effectively or do them properly. This can lead to a whole host of problems and slews of issues, from health-related to decreased productivity as a whole. Okay, The key points here I want to point out is that definition of work-related stress Stress arises when work demands surpass one's ability to cope. The second is distinguishing stress from pressure. They are two different things. While some pressure can be motivating, excessive pressure can lead to a stressful and health issue related environment. That's not good for you. And the last one is common stressors, which we've talked about before. This includes poor work design, lack of support, and excessive workload. You see, you're starting to see the theme here, right? Okay. So, the effects of workplace stress. We'll start with that. Um, workplace stress doesn't just affect individuals. It's a It has a broader in, implication for organizations and relationships as a whole. Uh, here's a deeper look. Um, one, it has an impact on the individuals, right? So decision-making and performance are the is the first thing that's affected. Stress impairs decision-making and it leads to mistakes. Some good, some bad, some overlookable, some not. For instance, a study found that stressed employees are more likely to make errors in judgment and in productivity if they're extremely stressed out or worried about whether or not um, what they're doing is correct. Uh, Which brings to the second point about impact on, on how it impacts individuals is the physical and mental health of that person as well. Chronic stress can lead to health problems such as anxiety, depression, Uh, In some cases, cardiovascular issues. You can have cardiac arrests from being too stressed out. That is a thing. Um, Regular stress can trigger conditions like panic attacks characterized by symptoms such as, uh, see if I remember correctly, uh, dizziness, rapid heart rate, shortness of breath. This can also cause you to pass out, which is worse. And then as far as the organization is concerned, their impact would be absenteeism and turnover. In other words, high stress levels can increase the staff turnover rate or people just not showing up to work, resulting in additional costs and disruptions in that business's workflow, which is not good for them. They don't want that. The other thing is workplace relations. The stress can also strain relationships between colleagues and clients, leading to toxic work environments where everyone is just kind of beating on each other, just trying to get the job done so they can go home already. I mean, there are broader implications like this can also affect you in your home life. You may not think that your work life affects your home life, but it does. Stress often extends beyond work. It affects personal relationships and your overall well-being. If you're a dude, you come home pissed off and stressed out. You're going to take it out on your wife and vice versa. This isn't just subject to men. This applies to women, too. Which brings me to the next point I want to bring up, which is monitoring and reducing workplace stress. I know I've mentioned this before, but I can't express how important this is and how much it needs to be addressed. Organizations play a critical role in managing workplace stress. Here's how they can address some of that stress uh, effectively. 
If you're the person who owns a business or runs a business, this could help you. First off, demands. You need to make sure that the workloads are manageable and the work environment is conduct, uh, conducive or conductive in a way to productivity. For instance, consider flexible working hours or let and select people work from home. Make that an option to alleviate the pressure of having to come in every single day. If they're not able to do it, don't make them do it because then their productivity is going to drop and they're going to hate you for it. You want to, them to be as productive as possible. Why? It makes you more money. If it makes you more money, you're going to be more happy, aren't you? Two, control. Allow employees to control over uh, more control over how they perform their tasks. If there, Unless there's a specific way it has to be done, let them control how they get it done. Managers should be focusing on setting the goals and allowing the employees the freedom to achieve them in their own way, not micromanaging them down to a T. Hey, you need to breathe here. You're not supposed to breathe there. Don't get up here. Don't go use the bathroom. Why haven't I see you at the table? Don't do that. That's just going to uh, irritate them more and stress them out. If they're already doing their job and they're doing the work and the work is getting done, does it matter what they're doing? As long as they're not, you know, breaking any company policies, does it really matter what they're doing? Does it matter if they take a, a huge dump in the bathroom at uh, 1230 every day on the dot? Does it matter if their work is coming in? It does not matter. If you want them to do more, tell them you want them to do more. But don't encroach on the little bit of freedom that they get while working. On that note. Three, support. Provide adequate resources and support. This includes access to mental health resources, a, ment a mentorship program if you can offer it depending on what type of uh, company you run, a supportive management team. I emphasize that last one, a supportive management team, not an overbearing one. There is a difference. <laughs> and we'll go into that in a later episode. Four, relationships. Foster a positive work environment for, by addressing conflicts, promoting teamwork, and regular team building exercises which can improve relationships and also reduce stress by allowing everyone to work together, get to know each other, and it also allows you to see where the issues are, where if there's certain employees who hate other employees and are trying to bring them down, they'll become obvious. Don't say nothing, just stand there and watch. Watch how everyone's acting when you're present, and then watch what they're doing when you're not there. This will tell you who are actually for you and who aren't, and who's just trying to get off, get over on you. Fifth, the roles. Ensure clarity in job roles and responsibilities, okay? Employees should have a clear understanding of their duties, how they fit into the larger organization's goals, and what those duties entail, Okay. Don't just have a dude who's assigned to IT, but then he's running the mail all over the building. That doesn't make any sense, okay? A manager's job is to watch over the employees, make sure that the work is getting done, not hover over them like a mom, and not stress them out and crank on them every time they get up from their desk for a random water cup or to use the bathroom. For all you know, they could have a very small bladder. Who cares? As long as the job is getting done, okay? Six, change. Manage organizational changes transparently and involve employees in the process. Why? This minimizes uncertainty and resistance because they'll already know where you're going and what you're doing. With that being said, additional resources. Always provide additional resources. Why? For more detailed guidance, you can also uh, give them references around the building, stuff like that. Or you can, if you're not sure on how to do this or how, or you need more help with stress management guidelines for your workplace environment, I recommend checking out the HSC, the Health and Safety Executive Guidelines. You can find that out online. They're available. And they'll be able to help you out with that. All right, all right, all right. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the last thing on my list, which is coping with workplace stress. I know I talked about it before, so I'll keep it uh, to the main points today. For the employees that are actually working under these conditions that have either no choice in the matter or can do something about it, but choose not to. Individuals can also take steps to manage their stress effectively. Okay, As I mentioned before, exercise and healthy eating uh, can help out. Regular activity, uh, physical activity and a balanced diet are essential for managing stress. Okay, Exercise helps to reduce stress hormones and improve overall moods. The other thing is communication. You have to talk. Okay, You can't just sit in the corner. That doesn't help you. You need to openly discuss stress with your supervisors and colleagues, the ones you know you can trust. Seeking support from a mentor or a counselor can also be beneficial and helpful to you. Uh, also, set boundaries. Okay, 
Learn to say no and prioritize your tasks. I've said this before, but I'll say it again. Effective time management and delegation can help manage workloads more effectively. If you can't do something, please speak up. Okay? They can't make you do anything. They can challenge you and say, hey, if you don't want your job, don't do it. Technically, they can't do that. They can ask you to do it. They can't force you to quit because you just didn't, you couldn't do it because you were already overworked. For one, that's a violation of labor laws in the first place. Uh, that being said, I'm no lawyer, so please double check your labor laws in your state before you even bother with that. But know that if your environment is stressing you out because they're trying to make you do more work than you need to, then it's probably high time you find another job. Which kind of brings me to my fourth point. Mindfulness and relaxation techniques. Practices like meditation and deep breathing can help you manage an immediate stressful environment and even improve your overall well-being as well. This can also help you make rational decisions despite how mad, upset, or stressed out you are with your current supervisor and or fellow employees. That being said, there are unhelpful stress management behaviors. I don't know if I want to kind of go into those, but to sum it up, avoid unhealthy coping mechanisms such as the basics uh, like excessive drinking of alcohol or consum- consuming it in any way, shape, and form for that matter. Avoid smoking, uh, over smoking rather, or overworking just to get by. Uh, these behaviors may provide short-term relief, but in the long run, they're just going to make it worse. If not, wear you down more. You need to take control, okay? Taking control of your life and your work life and maintaining a healthy work-life balance are crucial. Consider job crafting or uh, enrichment to align your work with your skills and interests. This allows you to find out whether or not the job you have is actually good for you or not. This proactive approach can lead to more satisfying and less stressful work experiences. You know, you want to make sure that everything is good for you in the neighborhood that, or rather in the work life neighborhood that you're in. You don't want to run yourself into the ground. We got enough people doing that as is. I have people in my family that are known for working themselves to death and it's while it is a norm for them, this is not natural. Okay? Nobody should be tr- uh, stressed out 24/7 seven, 7 days a week, week, not wake. Uh 365 days a year. Okay? This is this is not normal. This is why your hair starts turning white, your body starts aging prematurely, and you start losing interest in a lot of stuff that you used to have interest in. You used to be an energetic person, now look at you. You just kind of want to sit at home, relax, either watch some TV, go to bed, or read a book. Reading a book is fine, but, I mean, if that's all you do every day, you don't go anywhere or do anything, then, yeah, there's something wrong. I'm not saying you need to have a social life. I'm just saying you need to still be somewhat active, even if it's a little bit, and if being stressed out prevents you from being you and doing the stuff that you enjoy, then you need to find a way to get around it, okay? As we wrap up today's episode, I want you to reflect on your work environment. Are the areas where you are there areas where you can improve your stress management? Consider how uh, the strategies we discussed today might be applied to creating a healthier or more productive workplace, whether you're the employer or the employee or whether you're a manager who thinks you know everything. That being said, here's a question for you to think about between now and the next episode. How can you implement the strategies discussed today to manage stress in your workplace? Feel free to share your thoughts and experiences with us on the Patreon discussion board or in the comments of our YouTube channel down below. In today's episode, we explored crucial topics of managing stress in the workplace, We learned how the impact of the workplace stress on individuals and organizations, as well as discover the effective ways to monitor and reduce it as best as possible. So I hope you would indeed um, join us for a comprehensive discussion on the Patreon discussion board, as well as the YouTube comments section on ways we can make our environments more healthy and less stressful for everybody. Hope you have a great rest of your day and uh, peace out.